here we are at the ranch for our special, I don't know, some sort of construction Cast a thousand show. show it is. We've got three guests. It's a, it's a, you know, it's a field of six. It's the biggest field. We don't get fields this big at Gosford ever. So I just want to welcome to the show Stuart Davidson here, hey, mate. Richie Irvine here, and even though I'm snow free, there's Nathan Snow. I'm not going to be bothered to shake everyone's hand because I don't shake three people's hands. Um, welcome to the show, boys. A very important show for all of us. And uh, Mark, you want to guide us? Where are we going? Well, this is an emergency show, isn't it? Yeah. yeah. yeah it's, a, it's a down tools and, and, and campaign. Yeah, so yeah. Uh, Richie, uh, get us rolling here. What, uh, what prom uh, provoked this, um, well, urgent um, convention? And just quickly, why is it so urgent? When does this kick in? Well, isn't it years away? Well, it's kicked in in South Australia, and I think it kicks in middle of next year in Western Australia and Queensland. Right. Why, it's, why, why I sort of said it's a little bit urgent is because the state government, uh, New South Wales state government, are going to make some decisions quite soon, and um, they've put out a paper on it on why they think they should bring it in, and that paper is now open to public submissions up until the 29th of March. Okay. So. I've had a look at it and it doesn't seem any good. Right. Um, and I think that we need to all understand what what's happening with it. And it's, it's hard to really understand because there's not a huge amount of information out there, but I've tried to sort of sift through and, and find out as much as I can. And look, I just want to point out some of the things that I think will happen. Um, I've asked you and Nath to have a look and, and you boys as well. And let's have a conversation about it and, and see how we, we all feel. Okay, so the emergency part is that the paper's being released on the 29th. But well, it's... the paper's being released, but, but you can now, you can go home now and you can read the paper. Yep. And at the end of the paper, there's 12 questions that they ask. Yes. Like, should, we, should New South Wales government introduce a point of consumption tax? How should it be structured? All these different questions. And then anyone can fill it out. You send in the government and they will consider everyone's submissions. Okay, so it's important in that way. Right, yeah. And Get, and, and get like, us going, Rich, get us going. So, look, basically it has, well, okay, so why I'm sort of, um, you know, getting very vocal about this is as, as a punter, I want three things. I want competition in the marketplace and I want low percentage fixed odds markets and I also want Betfair. All three of those things could suffer quite seriously by the point of consumption tax that's being mooted. And the point of consumption tax that was brought in in South Australia um, was brought in with no discussions with other governments and it was also brought in with no consultation with the industry. It's a terrible tax. It has really bad implications for the industry that we love to bet in, which is sort of the corporate bookmaker um, industry. And it also has big implications for the tab, but we don't know exactly how it's going to affect the tab. And the, I think the tab sort of think that they're going to be sweet with it all and, and the tab actually want it because they're considered they've been overtaxed for a long time and they're right they have been um so it's a bit of a square uh, how up. have they been richie I, I think this is an important point to, to flush they're the only flush retail out. i'm in australia that got us all going didn't it <laughs> um true true and i think look, in relation look. to what the corporates have historically had in yes. the northern That's territory and and the t comparable taxes that they've paid their governments and racing over the last 10 years it's, it's, it's a little astronomical what the tab have paid in comparison. Right, so on their fixed odds product, is that what you're fixed saying? Fixed odds, toads, everything. Yeah, but the toads are a different matter because they're obviously already... But the fixed odds, already... is, the fixed odds as well. So this, the, the reason that corporates have been able to establish a market share that they have been able to establish is largely because the tab, A, didn't handle things the best, but B... Are uh, paying more. Are paying a lot more. Okay. So to try and simplify it as much as possible, so the South Australian model is 15% point of consumption tax on their gross book profit so you know you're whatever you're working at the races say bookie and they hold ten thousand and they they win two thousand of that you know in very simple terms you have to pay three hundred dollars exactly right so, so there's another three hundred dollars on holding ten thousand if you win the two we well, well, all, well, all the bookies can't win as it is on course yeah at this yeah, stage but what are you currently paying on your two thousand at the moment well you'd pay gst of ten percent and then you'd pay your race field fees which are anywhere between probably one and up to four percent but race fields are on turnover not uh no race. they're sort of they they it's a, it's, it's a hybrid in victoria they're both in new south wales it's just on turnover queensland i'm not exactly sure um but to look at it on a bigger scale like so sports bet and, and and what the state governments are doing is they're saying we're first in line so it's gross your gross book win so where before you can't deduct gst off it you can't deduct product fees all that kind of stuff you can't deduct any of your business expenses like yeah, wages, yeah, yeah, yeah. all that okay. kind of stuff. So I went and had a look. So Sportsbet, for example, Sportsbet's basically the only joint outside of the tab they're actually making money, right? A 15, so, and they, their gross 
win on their book over the year is 400 million, right? And of that 400 million, when they've paid all their product fees and all of their expenses, um, they end up with a $120 million profit, right? When you apply this 15% point of consumption tax, their profit goes from 120 million down to 60 million, right? So, I mean, they're still making, it's not too bad, but I mean, it's a pretty heavy. Well, it's a 50% tax yeah, on, on their so it's net. A, it's on their net, which is huge. Every other corporate bookie, it wipes out any profit they have and puts them into the red, right? So, you know, um, and in terms of the tab, I don't understand, no one knows, and I've sniffed around as much as I can to understand what point of consumption tax the tab are gonna pay. And at the moment, there is a point of consumption tax in New South Wales, but the only people who pay it are the tab because they have a retail license. So they pay it. And what they do is they, the New South Wales government allows them to have their retail monopoly, yeah. their re retail monopoly and also run the, the tote. And they pay, they have to pay the New South Wales government 19% of their gross win on tote odds and they have to pay 11% on fixed odds, right? So what that actually does is sort of, in my, from what I can see, is instantly shoots down the credibility of introducing a 15% point of consumption tax because you already have, like New South Wales already have a point of consumption tax with only the tab pay on fixed odds, but it's only 11%. And they get a retail license. So how could you possibly start charging bookies 15% when they don't have a retail monopoly or a retail license? Well, unless state? you extend it to the tab and say, you, you're, you're, you're liable for this, this, this new tax. Yeah, and so the, the, I Which went to the tab annual absolutely. report and tried to see, and they, only, they have one paragraph on it, and they say, we welcome the introduction of a point of consumption tax but it needs to be made obvious to the government that we can't be taxed twice. So who knows what, we, it's, impossible to, or it's impossible for me to find out what the negotiations between the different state governments are with the TAP. Um, so yeah, so, so there's that. So you don't know what's been happening in South Australia in relation no. to TATs? No, and I've, and I've like emailed CEOs of, of the corporate bookies and you know, Betfair and stuff and said, do you guys know what's going on? And everyone's like, no, nah, we don't know, we can't find out. Which is not right, like we need to understand what's happening with it. Yeah, so that's sort of where, it, where it's at. And, um, and look, I think that it's, you know, it just, it's, just, it's just another nail in the bookie's coffin. Like, it was advantage bookie for basically up until three or four years ago. And now it's basically, not too bad, like it's pretty evenly poised. Uh, Richie, thing, like, how's it going to affect like the punters? Like most of our yeah, viewers yeah, are punters. Yeah, sure, so exactly. Yeah. Yeah. You're talking 400 million and 90%, 15%. I'm sitting there going, so, well, fucking, I'm even spinning. Yeah. But uh, how does that. it affect our viewer okay, so and is, our so player? Is, and, and, and I'll take, come back to where I said. So the New South Wales government are talking about being either a 15% point of consumption tax on profit or a 2% turnover tax. If they bring in a 2% turnover tax, bet fair close down straight away because all of their revenue, or 120% of their revenue, goes out in products, in product fees and taxes. So Betfair shut down, they're done. Not just on racing, but on... Surely that's not happening. Well, that's, mm. that's, it says it in the, in the thing, it says we're t considering why a 2%. They, why do they care? They don't care about Betfair, so why... No, they don't. Uh, yeah. well, well, one, one of the biggest problems we have, just, just uh, with diverting a little bit, is a lot of people who put these papers out and make these decisions, are no, no different to Mr. Beattie last week, who's now the NRL um, <laughs> uh, advisory on some big the job, the yeah. and he Hawks. can't tell us about <laughs> who the Cronulla Sharks are. Because yeah. a lot of people who put these papers out there, they're, they're people in no, suits, and they're fuckwits. But oh. this is a draconian tax, it was meant for the turn of the century, that impedes growth. Yes. Real, Anything that impedes that's, growth. That, that's the direction we want think, to go in. I think yeah. that's the thing, like, we've got to talk about, like, historically, where racing and the government's got their funding from racing was, you know, fixed odds on, on course bookie turnover tax, and from the totes. And the marketplace has undergone such rapid change, as we all know, in the last 20 to 30 years, and especially the last four or five years, it went to a stage where, you know, the corporate bookies came in, they raped and pillaged, there was no minimum bet law, they didn't pay a thing to anyone, it was no good for the marketplace at all, and then we've got the race field legislation, we've got minimum bet laws, and then from there, all of a sudden, racing's now got rivers of gold, we've got record prize money, participants are flying, punters right now, we can all get on for something, bookies, if they're smart enough, like sports bet or Ladbrokes, yeah. they can make an earn. So the market's right at that really sweet spot at the moment and we've got to talk about where we want the funding that, to go in the future. Like if the totes are going to be allowed to decline, which I don't think they should and I'll talk about later, but that means you're going to have to keep taxing fixed odds more and more mm. and Betfair more and more and it gets to a tipping point soon where the big players will just pull out of the market. And while it's true that 
large proportion of the punters out there aren't price sensitive, the, the smaller percentage of punters that are, are the ones that turn over the most amount of money and they're essentially the ones that fund everything that goes on. And they'll soon reach a tipping point where they decide, well, no, we'll bet in Hong Kong, we'll bet on UK racing, or worse still, we'll just go to Asian exchanges or, or SPs. And, yeah, they won't have a game to play, that's And, what and there'll be no game to play. So I think we've got to talk about, A, reviving the totes so that funding can be revived a bit that way, but also getting to that spot on fixed odds where you don't want to affect the marketplace. Mm. And that's what this point of consumption tax yeah. is. That's why we're all here, because we all see that as as being that tipping point. So, what, and, and to finish off what I'm saying is, so I just explained why Betfair will be kaput if, it's a, if they introduce a turnover tax. I think that's probably pretty unlikely. But even at a, even at a 15 point, 15% point of consumption tax, that's taking up basically 65% of Betfair's revenue. I've, I have a bit to do with all those people at Betfair. We all do, we all know them pretty well. They're very um, positive and they're like, everything's great, but they're not the ones who are funding Betfair. And Packer pulled out of Crown Bet like that if you, like you just look at Betfair and go, nah, no good, here's your license back, and then it's up to someone else to come in and, and buy the Australian license. That's that's talking about on a on a point of consumption tax. I'm, that's not if it's a turnover tax, it's all over. Yeah. Well, for, for um, me, the thing that, they, that they've not got their head around is that we're in a competitive market now. 20, 30 years ago, 40, 50 years ago, it was all racing. That was where the majority of gambling was yeah, done. That's we so have true. so much yeah. sport now. Yeah. We actually have to be competitive. We have to offer a really good product because yeah. we are fighting against the EPL. We're fighting against the rugby league. We're actually fighting against them. Yeah. So we actually point, need to have a good product. I think I think a strong marketplace needs fixed odds, tote and betfair. Yes. It needs all three of those yeah. to be strong for the market to be but strong. How are the totes going? Terrible. Yeah. They're just, they're in but isn't that deliberate yeah. by the yeah. tab? Isn't that, the tab, they, make, they, they, the tab they, make more they, money out of it? That's diluted. Thing, this is when, and you can't bag them. Like the tab, they're, 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 they're doing it. They're a private company yeah. doing what's best for their shareholders. And this is where, when racing sold the tote, unfortunately, sometimes tab's aims differ from racing's aims. And mm. racing gets more out of every tote bet than it does. Yep. And and the problem with the and totes, tab get tab get more out of every fixed odds bet. And the tab get, so the tab get tab make more 15, out of fixed odds. They make fifteen percent out of fixed so odds racing. So obviously every talking head on TV is now focused on shilling yeah, the fixed yeah. odds rather than the tote. And the tote dies. And the other reason the tote has died is because these corporate bookmakers have been allowed to bet tote odds without paying the appropriate. Which fee is the on dumbest it. thing in the history of Australian racing is that they let the so, corporates. And I know that's hypocritical because I've been betting tote odds for ten years and well, loved it. But the fact that they let bookies bet tote odds is so stupid and worse than that exotics like exotics no is the second worst. worst the dumbest thing was allowing the privatization of the tab okay <laughs> <laughs> all right sure. so, so we're, what's we're, happened is with the corporates taking these best tote bets once upon a time they'd funnel them back in the pools and everything was fine now only the, the absolute recreational punters can get those products so they just hold every dollar yeah. and there's nothing going in the pools now and the exotic markets yeah. are terrible you, can't, you, can, you cannot have a, yeah. an exotic bet at the moment it's just yeah, very I think Stewie made a very good point about that last week, didn't you? Mm -hmm. It's very disappointing. Um, where does Racing New South Wales stand on all this? Because obviously they're in they're in between us and the government. Yeah, I think I think Racing New South Wales um, they didn't want a point of consumption tax, but there's nothing they can do about it. And their thing now is, well, what are we going to get out of it? Well, well, hang on. So let's just let's just walk back before race fields and tax parity. It seemed like the government was getting a ton of money. Racing wasn't getting much of that. Yeah. It hasn't that flipped on its head? And, isn't and that's the government... great. And it's like, and, and you know, with respect to the government, how I feel is that the government needs to back off a bit and just put more and more money into racing because it's such a good generator. I mean, there's 30,000 people. Weren't they earning a lot more money out of racing before? Like, don't they appear to have given a lot back. Yes. Yeah, yeah, like, that's true. And, and, and that's so, why and, I think... Yeah. That and I see, need, I see what your point that's is. That's why there's a need for a point of consumption tax because they were getting money out of racing when there was no online. Now, because there's online, the bets are being taken elsewhere, so... But it needs to be unified by the same time. So yeah. there, there is a need for a point of consumption tax, it's just the right level of it, that's all. Well, New South Wales and Victoria are missing out. Exactly. Because we have this free trade agreement amongst the states and Northern mm. Territory can rape and pillage when they supply no product, and, and they have no supplies and, the and they have the no problem. demand as far as bookmakers. Yeah. Mm. So they, must be, they must be licking their lips and just laughing. Yeah, but racing has done very well over the last five years because the government have been Good that's dollars. what I'm saying. Yeah, they've, like, like, they've said to him, okay, jack years. your product fees up. The tax parity thing is very yeah. interesting. And it's, and, it's, and, and the only reason that prize money has gone up in New South Wales is because of the tax parity thing. The government are pushing more and more money back into racing, which is fantastic and it's commendable. And the race field levy. And the, and the race field levy, yeah, definitely. They, you know, we've got high race field levies. Um, so just, just to finish off what, what I, and, and why it relates to the people who are watching this is that, so we know that Betfair might close down. In my, in my calculations, fixed odds percentages after a 15% point of consumption tax will go up by 2%. They went up by about that much 
um, when the higher product fees came in, and I think that they'll go up by about two percent again. So, can you, you know, give us some figures there, Richie? What, how that works? Yeah, no, okay. no, no, just the difference, what it used to be and what it is now. Okay, so and I went and, and yeah. your sports bets financial results, like from two thousand up until two thousand fourteen. Their gross win on the fixed odds is about ten percent. I know, no, Richie. Like on a race basis, so we're going to be betting into higher percentages. Is yeah, that, like, that the go? Look, so. yeah. So, well, what, what do you mean? Like, what, what's oh, the difference? So you know, like let's say they open up one hundred and thirty percent or something like that. Theoretically, are they going to now open up at one hundred and forty percent? Are they well, probably the best way to look margin? at it is a very like, you know, a, a successful pro punter might make five percent on their turnover. Hmm. This point of consumption tax will cut that in half, and then you might have someone who just. Just keeps their head above water, winning one or two percent on turnover. Well, they're that's now breaking. That's assuming it. that it gets passed on. How do they, they can't pass? Absorb yeah, and that's true. That's they true. Okay, yeah, that's a there. good point. So, like, they can't absorb. Well, how? Well, how can? Well, and the problem is, they're at the in interest because when the product fees got jacked up, they did absorb it, right? And we all, all the punters were like, okay, well, we can pay a bit more, and we all make a bit less, or we lose a bit more. And the bookies, they want to just pass it straight on us, but they know that. If the markets go from 100, say a, a, a top flight of 112 up to say 114, mm. then there, as Gordo mentioned before, we've got sport, which is 105% across the board. People, whether they realize it or not, get more value out of betting on sport and they move towards that. So I think the bookies also realize that they've probably reached the height of the percentages they want to charge. And sure, they can pass it on to us, but does that mean that people like me and all of us sitting here stop betting? Because, I mean, well, if I go- Bet less. Bet less. If I, if I go from, you know, making a small profit each year to breaking square. And if I break square for a couple of years, I'll probably just brush it, mm -hmm. you know? Um, so, so we're gonna, I think we'll see a rise in percentage or um, bookies, and then all what leads further that is just bookies putting their arms in there and it gets too hard. Yeah, more, more consolidation, less yeah, choice. Less choice, and that's, you know, that, that, that's happening and we know it's gonna happen. But I mean, the point of, the, the South Australian model is so bad that even on-course bookies are gonna be paying it. If you, if you make more than $150,000 a year, you have to pay a point against the tax. You Rich. talk about coming back to the races, you're not going to come back unless, you, you would hope to make more than 150000 So you're going to go back and they're going to say, right, are you got to pay 15% as well? You're going to go, well, no. Rich, no one's putting up a board on Adelaide anymore. Yeah, yeah. My father doesn't even bet on South Australian racing. Right, yeah, yeah. Well, it, would, it wouldn't, but it's only where you're domiciled. So, and, and maybe, you know, that what they're doing there has led to being very, um, uncompetitive overall. But Definitely. Yeah. yeah. It'll, drive us, we, it'll drive us offshore as well. We had a two horse race thanks to Racing New South Wales last week. Two, two horse races on the same day. Outstanding work by everybody. And I noticed the super tab there, the final dividends were $1.61 and $1.70 the other. Unbelievable. Isn't that so a horrible look? It's the worst look. And, and when it's $1.91 you pick for a football match, $1.91 you pick for a football match, and here we got. Fred Smith, he walks in the tab, he wants to bet in the two horse race because he can pick the winner and one's a dollar sixty and one's a dollar seventy. Just shows how much more he's been taken out yeah. by horse well, racing. It's probably for starters a dollar sixty eight and a dollar seventy nine. Yeah. And they rape the eight cents and they rape the nine cents out. Oh there's the product. Have yeah, a little bet, yeah. Fred well, Smith. Yeah. How we lose Fred Smith. Yeah. This is the thing I want to get onto about bringing the totes back. Like how we can't pay a dollar sixty two on a on a tote yeah. bet like we can on a fixed odds bet is beyond me. How well, we can, they just don't want it. Yeah. Like, we should and also understandably don't want it because yeah, they've that, 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 no, give, given permission. Like we, we need to get yeah. that tote yeah. down to that, close well, to that 112, 13 that we yeah. are on fixed odds. And the way you do that is you get rid of the rounding down, you get rid of all the rebates for everyone, and you start again. Put everybody on a level playing field. Put everyone yeah. on a level playing field. Everyone field. should always be on a level yeah. playing field. And, this got 100 and, and yeah. that'll pay for itself. Well, that needs to be legislated. Too. And all, also, also, Snowy, I think that, um, uh, for example, if there's a scratching in it, Two horse race at the thing. What does the tote pay on the winner? We all know it pays a dollar. Yeah. What are you laughing at, Gordon? Because I, I know I'm where you're going. You're going to be on it's going to be hilarious. <laughs> no, yeah. no, we don't pay seventy-five cents. Correct. Yeah. We pay a dollar, money back. So at that point, it's a hundred percent market because you're on the winner, you get your money back. Yep. So I'm saying in these smaller fields, which we have to get used to and used to and used to, you need to work on a theory that for every horse, it's 2%. Mm -hmm. So if it's a two horse race, it's 102%. So you're getting $2 and $1.90, or $2.40 and a dollar cent. It's a three horse race, 104%, until we work up to eight ra races and get back to where our normal sure. purr is. No, I agree with you, but yeah. you know, 2% I think a horse, you're, I think just you're to make it. Win. I know that, but you can't offer up a dollar sixty and dollars. No, that's true. Not because of the robbing, because we lose the customer. It's, it's the worst look ever. It's the lowest look of all time. Yeah. It's just so like... well done there, Super Tab. Sydney paid two dollars the roughing and a dollar forty the winner, which is the same as a dollar sixty, dollar seventy. No, I think that's punters. even worse. A dollar forty and two dollars is just. <laughs> How about that? It's yeah. the most outrageous thing. So that English bloke the, in there the at the tab, put your head around that with your English mind. 
Freddie Funkelwinkel, whatever your name is, and give that some thought. That's Elmer Funky Cooper. He's oh, no. <laughs> I, love, I love a two-horse race because the fixed odds in the morning had the horses around the wrong way as yeah, well. Yeah, we know that. Yeah. Completely wrong, We're not so trying that's to that's keep that's you in the game, Bob. Oh, We've yeah. got you. Yeah, yeah. We're trying Here's to get Fred Smith yeah. in the game, who is going to bet on the Bowmane Tigers with the 17 and a half right, start. How does any of that happen? It has to be legislated, which means you have to go we'll to race, the racing, racing minister stuff. and say... That, because we need the ministers to... Yeah, but they're the business partner of the tab. Why are they going to do it? We need the ministers to know that the Cronulla Sharks are the Sharks. Well, you, that's a long, it's long term view. It's all business these days. People do MBAs and then run businesses they know nothing about just because they have that degree behind them. It's, 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 it's a similar trend. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> what about you, Stewie? So, look, look what, what's going to happen with your business? Well, if they imply a turnover tax, it, it'll be it'll, it'll just kill it because they'll pass on too much of the cost to me as the punter. Yeah. Um, Beth, like, like Richie said, Betfair won't exist, and the amount that the corporates would have to pass on would basically render their service well dormant or obsolete to a punter like me. I'm not prepared to bet into a market with such high percentages. So is this why you had a lot of talk about property development earlier on? Definitely. Yeah. <laughs> what it could do, buddy, is it could drive people like me off, offshore. Okay. You know, and like. You know, the, for example, the illegal SP market in the 1970s was because you know a product existed where there was high demand, yeah. and the and the bookies couldn't subs, couldn't substantiate that. So could well, there be a comeback? Absolutely, the, yeah. the yeah. SP market's coming back for sure, Is and it's Vanuatu not. Vanuatu still nice. Is what's that? Vanuatu still nice. What's <laughs> yeah, yeah, but like, and, and you, I mean, as a bookie, and sorry to interrupt, but on the on the SP thing, you can't bet credit, and you've got these exorbitant taxes. It's like it's just like okay, well let's not let's BSP bookies and let's bet people credit and not pay the taxes. So like with all forms of business, if you make the product undesirable, then you're going to have a black market. Yeah, you're exactly right. Exactly right. Yeah, that's it. Yeah. And that's that was a great comment there, Gordon. Talking and mate, about I remember our... growing up, there was an SP in every suburb. There was yeah. nearly one in every pub. Mm. Every time you meet someone at a party, my grandfather used to I be know, an yeah. SP. Yeah. Yeah. And he's fucking yeah. torture. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm a pun. And he goes, oh, Hello. my granddad. Oh, my granddad. And my grandma. My uncle had a grandma. I know. I got a grandma. I'm a big grandma. Particularly when you met the grandma and she's got purple hair. It's true, but well, illegal betting will just oh. flourish, like you and me got even billion the other day. Danish twist tenth oh, and egg tart fourteenth. Yeah. Another billion I, off gold. I, you know what? I thought I had Alize against you as well. I completely forgot. Well, look, if we have to take a dollar, if we have to take a dollar ninety-five each or two, we accept it. But if they then say no, you got to take a dollar ninety-two each or two. Yeah. Me and you would just rather been amongst right. ourselves. Yeah, you know, yeah. Of, course of course we're better. We don't, we don't yeah. mind being fucked a little bit, but for Christ's sake, sure. don't, don't tell us you're not going to lose any lube. Yeah, <laughs> mm. that's a very fair comment because that, that's what the game's all about. Look, yeah, anyway, any you, um, anywhere more to add, boys? Where are we heading anymore? Are you finished, Mr. Irvine? I think so. Yeah. So, Stewie, look, have you kind of finished? In as far as sorry, this discussion. I'm listening and commenting. I'm not. I'm not <laughs> running the discussion. So you're, yeah, okay, you're not. You're, you're finished. Yes, I'm finished. Okay. Is, there, is there anywhere bar South Australia we can compare this with? Is there a, an international place that's attempted to go down this path and, you, and well, rooted so their England industry? have and England they got a VAT, haven't they? Yeah, so they, well, they, they, they pay, um, I think it's a 15% point of consumption tax, but they don't pay VAT. So if, if they were bringing a 15% point of consumption tax in Australia and, they, and the bookies didn't have to pay GST, they're going to be sweet. All right, is that, is that a place to go then? Is there is there so, a possibility? Yeah, you can compare it with England, and, 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 and England's model is they get taxed vastly less than what will the Australian bookies get taxed if they do bring in this point of consumption tax at the South Australian model. So there's there's no precedent anywhere in the world that supports what South Australia have done, um, and and what the other states are proposing to do. Yeah, except for Victoria, like the strong mail is that Victoria are going to bring in eight percent, probably. The best result that we can hope for. Even that sounds excessive. Yeah, it does. It does. It, it really is excessive. I mean, even so, you know, um, probably the best result we can hope for is that New South Wales follow them and bring in eight percent, and we'll see what wow. happens over the next couple of years. Wow. Um, so yeah, but I think that look, we've had a good conversation about it. At eight percent, you don't stimulate anything, but yeah, you're knocking it on. You're just yeah, you still nail. Yeah, I mean, what I think should happen is it should be. Um, a point of consumption tax on the bookies net profit like after they've done everything you know and so sports bet for example would pay what well, they'd have to pay so it's like million. an income tax you mean yeah yeah but yeah but it's but then because what it, but then that that allows to, bookies to still try and do you get to claim if you've lost <laughs> yeah you can claim year on but year at least with like, the ata mark at least they're almost a business partner this there's no partner here no it's just impeding no no mm. I, don't, I understand that's a very good point Stuart. Mm. but that you know like a and then you know, the tab would have, they make 300 million a year or something, so the tab would have to pay, what's that, 45 million or something, you know, and the state governments are going to get a bit out of it. I mean, they're not, you know, like, but, so that would probably be a good result and a fair result. 
probably not going to happen. Um, but I think probably the best thing we can hope for is that it's an 8% point of consumption tax and we just hold our breath and see what happens over the next couple of years. But Rich, why is it not federal? What do GST? Why is it well, state it by state because fighting it's, for you know, Well, that's, I mean, it's the obvious thing. Exactly. We, need, we need to have a national regulator, not a national regulator on racing, but a national regulator on waging, wagering. It'd be so easy to do. But don't we have that? Because it's, it's madness. I don't know. I wrote him a letter to the Social Services Minister stating that, saying, get everyone to Canberra, let's put a national regulator together. He didn't even read my letter. He wrote back a thing saying, I'm going to work hard on the National Dif Disability Investment Scheme or whatever, whatever that thing is called. No, Insurance Scheme. So NDIS. And I was like, what? Uh, well, did you not read my letter? And I put it on Twitter and everyone was like, is this bloke serious? So, and then I wrote, you know, again saying, hey mate, do you reckon you could read my letter? So that's where we're at in terms of getting and some federal leadership. Richie, as far as like out. people reading the document and then filling out the questionnaire down the bottom, so we want as many people as possible to get on there and if give you their care, like go and you know, like tell everyone, tell guys where they can, it's not a particularly hard document to read. It's ten or twelve pages. Read it and then write what you think. You know, and yeah. maybe we might. I thought we should probably pin the link to the yeah. rant yep. Twitter yeah. account. And people can go and do what they want with it. And um, if you don't want to read the ten or twelve pages, still do the questionnaire at the end as well. And there's like <laughs> there's like there's eight questions that you'd be like. I've, I'm, like you I'm look at it, already. Already. like it yeah. says, what structure should we adopt for how you pay tax? You just go, well, I just don't care about that. You put a line mm. straight through it. Okay. You might, or, your might just the very first question should there be a point of consumption tax? You might just write no, and then just leave the other eleven questions blank. Okay. That'd how, be fine. How do people know me so well? <laughs> Um, but don't be delusional. So this is going to be passed on to punters. All right. This so is not in, just a in tax summary, on bookmakers. In summary, uh, uh, this is coming. Yep. It will put Betfair out of play. Yes, if they be, if they if it's a turnover if it's a fifteen percent turnover definitely and fifteen percent is going to make it very um, no, unpalatable mean, for like, them. We've got to try and make, make racing authorities understand what no Betfair does to the marketplace. It's not just the money that's turned over on Betfair. It's it's a multiplier for the rest of the industry. Like it provides a price point that you know when it, when it starts to marry up, a punter's confident to bet. But more importantly. It, it gives a bookie a price point that yeah it's there on the bet, on Betfair therefore it's the correct price yeah. and they take some sort of bet on it where you remove that it's going to bring about a whole lot of cautiousness in yeah, the lack, marketplace. People lack confidence when it's they not lack there. confidence mm. and you know not to mention all the the big players and big models that have Betfair built into their models mm. that's going to throw everything into chaos like we've seen when Betfair goes down for a day or so yeah. it just affects turnover across the board. Like the whole so you're, you're telling me, Snow, that bookmakers are actually going to have to start doing some work if Betfair goes. No, they, well, they, won't, do the they, they won't. Yeah. They won't do the work. They won't. They won't do the work. They'll just pack up and go. They'll do more work on profiling. Yeah. 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 So there'll, there will be more profiling because mm. obviously, if you if you increase the um, if you reduce the profitability of a corporate bookmaker, they're going to go right. Well, these marginal accounts now they have to go. Yeah. yeah. I have to get rid of them. Yeah. Yeah. And that's yeah. what's going to happen with each rise in tax as well. Like the the more marginal the client, the more they'll have to be turned away. Mm. And there's not there's not one person out there who really understands the industry who's going, I want to become a bookie. There's just no incentive for what all the stuff that's happened over the last year. And granted, they deserved it. Like they were very sort of cavalier and arrogant for ten years before that. So they've they've had their square up. But there's nothing and. You know, we're all about the punter, but we need someone to bet with. Yeah, we do. And, we do. You know, like, we can't bet with us, but we could bet with us. No, we're in, the, we're in bed together with them, that's for sure. So. Yeah. Well, the only thing that I'm thinking about right now is opening an SP business and <laughs> ringing up my old mate Arlie and seeing if he can do collects for me. <laughs> <laughs> Good, I know you say it in jest, but you might be, you might be that far from the truth. <laughs> um... We, so, need, we, we can't <coughs> try me turnover, that's all I'm saying. We need to, I, I realise this is not going to stimulate turnover. Yep. But, that, you know. Like, and the market's doing good, it's doing great. Let's let the market keep ripping along, yeah, you know? like That's the point, like, yeah. prize money keeps rising, punters are happy, bookies are reasonably happy, everything's going smoothly, there's, there's, let's not rock the boat too much. Like. Yeah, yeah. I well, 15% um, on gross margin is rocking the boat. Yeah. Absolutely, even 8% is 8% shit outs. 8%, I, 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 I thought you were going to say 5 well, five, I mean, you know, and this is it. Like, let's campaign Can we just start like, with five and just see what happens? Five would be great. I think that everyone would, would cut five on the chin and be stoked. So, yeah. and let's see hey, what that does to yeah, the Yeah, but market. it could be five if they take the GST away. Say, say it, it, look, it's a federal government thing because what's happened minutes. is mm. that the Northern Territory have got all the money. Yeah. They've got... They've got whatever they've made out of their corporates living with them. Mm. And they've also got the, all the GST that's been charged, collected, oh, sure. and back mm. to them as well. And they well. bring nothing to the table. So... All the states are going, Northern Territory have got all this money for 20 mm. years. Yeah. Yeah. We want it back. Mm. That's what they're doing. That's mm. fair enough too, I, I believe. Mm. Yeah. yeah. And that, that's why like the point of consumption tax, like 
probably instead of a GST is the correct play. Yes, yeah. That, but, that's but, what it's but, replacing. It's also why you need one federal controlling body as well. Of course. Because oh, you shouldn't mm. have this situation arising. And the fact that it's arisen and New South Wales and Victoria have missed out is what's brought us here today. Mm. Wow. Well, so let's, really, push, let's push for 5%. Really good. Yeah. Really good. Yeah. In the meantime, um, we're going to... The six of starting a fan club for the uh, Cronulla Hawks. What a game we live in. What a game we live in. Look, I want to thank our three guests. Stuart Davidson on the right. Richie Irvine from... What's that place you call? Gaming or something? What's it? What's Fair, wagering. Fair wagering. Fair wagering from Fair Wagering. Well, we and the uh, today. Good, good. From the old snows to who I always shake the hand of the snows to even though I'm always snow free. <laughs> right. Thanks a lot, guys. Cheers. Did that cover you want to...